They are there for a reason. These individuals being held at the American military base on Cuba known as Gitmo. They are, for the most part, those who harbor ill will against America, her people, her allies, and those in the world who do not believe as they do. Which is why there is a faction in this country and even around the world who would prefer these men never see the free light of day again. Because it has been proven in the past, those who gain their freedom are sometimes those who snap back and attack free countries and innocent people with a newly found verve for carnage. So when the President of the United States decides more of them will go free, we're once again faced with the dilemma of considering more killers roaming loose, more ill will going to be shoveled onto America when they reach their new homes, and we are helping them resume their bloody ways. Or are we? This and much more from the side of foreign policy, a presidential candidate, and we're right back in the Cold War. Your phone calls welcome at 1877 Newsmax. Let's get to work. First, welcome the former CIA analyst, former State Department advisor to John Bolton, and the Vice President for Policy and Programs at the Center for Security Policy, Fred Flights. Joined by the prolific author, national security analyst, and columnist for the Washington Times, we always refer to as the man with the constantly packed suitcase. I swear he needs to sit still once or twice. L. Todd Wood. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Let's get right to work. Fred, I come to you. There's the question. The president has once again released individuals, detainees, from Gitmo. This time, 15. Some people say, you got to close it. It's inhumane. We still hear that. Yet we still see evidence that one or two, it doesn't make a difference, you get them loose and some of them will come back and come right back at America and create terror again. Is this really just a case of the president blowing it and once again not understanding the need to keep these people behind bars? Well, and I'm very worried about this. These 15 Gitmo detainees are being sent to the Arab Emirates where they will undergo a de-radicalization program. Frankly, this program has been proven to be ineffective in Saudi Arabia. Some of these people have returned to the fight. We know there is a 30% recidivism rate, 30% return to the battle. And we also know this administration is rushing to get these Gitmo detainees out. Some have gone to Gitmo, Senegal, Serbia, Montenegro. I'm very, very worried what will happen to these dangerous terrorist detainees. What then, though, is the reason? And, Todd, I'm going to ask you this because you travel around the world, so let me come to you. The president letting these people back into the possibility of going to battle. And the United Arab Emirates, when you think about going to the UAE, that's not as if they're going to be held for the rest of their lives here. Isn't this just like house arrest and basically saying, here's a string, go ahead and tie it to your ankle, and if it breaks, sorry. Yeah, yeah, good to be back. Thank you. Uh, you know, I think we're, we're past, actually, the point of, uh, you know, trying to dissect why this president does the things he do, does as far as national security is concerned. I, I think it's blatantly obvious that there is an agenda from this man as far as uh, what he's trying to do uh, as far as ISIS and the other threats to the United States. And that is, and we've talked about this before, is not necessarily the national security of the United States. There is another agenda, whether it be globalism, whether it be you know, uh, progressivism, uh, you know, wanting to Does he to just not America. care, Todd? I mean, I mean, look, here's a president. Does he just not care? Does he, d does he not get it? Well, I don't, I think he completely gets it. I think there's just another agenda that the American public, public is not privy to. You know, there was documents released today by Soros that showed large amounts of money going to uh, support the refugee program and to change America as we know it. I think that's what this president is about. It's not about the national security of America. We can debate why he does, you know, releases prisoners, why he doesn't fight ISIS aggressively. I mean, it's all boils down, boils down to the same thing, in my opinion. Fred, I'm going to come to you in a moment because I want to stay with Todd because he has some news on this issue right here, but I'm going to want you to talk about this as well. The Paul Manafort issue in Ukraine that has become a campaign issue now. The New York Times indicates there may be as many as much as $13 million on the ledger books that he was supposed to or may have been paid for basically helping Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych, who is no doubt a tainted candidate under any stretch of the imagination. They did say, though, there's no evidence that he actually received the money. Todd, let me come to you first on this, because you are heavily in Ukraine, those areas of the world. You know what's happening there, and you have some new information that would regard to this story, yes? Yeah, a year ago, I spent a lot of time uh, interviewing the National Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine and the prosecutor's office that supports them. I got to know them very well. They invited me back for uh, an update, uh, you know, down in the future to see how uh, they are doing as far as fighting corruption in Ukraine. I mean, this is a big deal, and they're brave, professional people. I, when I heard this news about Manafort, I spoke to them overnight uh, multiple times 
in Kiev uh, with their press secretary and others and asked a lot of questions about these documents. And, you, and what I was told, which is actually shocking, is that the documents the New York Times uh, published in their article and referenced um, were actually not the documents that were given to the Corruption Bureau back in May. These are new documents that suddenly appeared at the same time that they were given to the, to the New York Times, you know, two, two months before the U.S. presidential election. So I think these are highly suspect. Even the Anti-Corruption Bureau in Ukraine said there is no way they can uh, you know, verify these documents whatsoever. And so, you know, the Times actually made it look like Paul Manafort is under investigation and connected to a probe and, you know, maybe prosecuted. Which he's there, not. That is not the case at all. And frankly, some of these documents may have been manufactured. And considering the record of the Times and doing just that over the years, um, uh, you know, uh, I, I think these are highly suspect and the whole story okay. is highly suspect. But it is still possible that these documents are real. Again, your people cast aspersions on it. I think that's fair. Fred, when we come mm -hmm. to you in something like this, there is the possibility they're not real. They don't exist. There's a possibility that it's all wrong. But does it not once again point to the fact that you got to vet the people that you're involved with here? You got to make sure that there's not any problems here with them. And everybody knew that Manafort was working in the Ukraine in the first place. So it's possible that this is something that was missed and does at least deserve further investigation to make sure the truth. Yes. I guess it's possible, but I don't trust the New York Times. I completely agree. Allegations like this mysteriously showing up so close to a presidential election has to be treated with suspicion. But frankly, nothing the New York Times says about the Trump campaign is true. And I would dismiss this with a grain of salt until an objective party evaluates it. Fair. Okay, fair. An objective party. I get you. Now, I mentioned the word vetting. Let me ask you on this, Fred, because Donald Trump talked about extreme vetting for would-be immigrants. The words extreme, extreme vetting, what does that really mean? Because it just seems to be a thrown around phrase. It's, first of all, I like this speech from Mr. Trump. I've been critical of some of the things that he has said and campaigned on. I thought it was a good foreign policy speech. We're seeing uh, the possibility that ISIS terrorists are going to penetrate this country through immigration. And I think he's trying to find a way to question possible terrorists to see whether they're going to be loyal to the U.S. Constitution and our way of life. And that's allowed under the law. And that's what I think he's saying in this speech. I think it's, it's the right way to go. So then let me turn to you, Todd, because during an address yesterday, Donald Trump called for heavier scrutiny of people entering the United States. That's one side of this. Then while he's also talking about foreign policy, we have the former NATO commander, James Stavridis, talking about his foreign policy lacking any substance. And then I want to talk to you a little bit about Russia with regard to this. First, here's what he said. It's a where's the beef type of speech. I think he made a, a reasonable stab at, hey, we ought to try and take some international action. Uh, he kind of said, good dog, NATO. What really was lacking in the speech was anything about how the interagency of the government would work together, how would use intelligence, how would use cyber private public cooperation, strategic communication. The only strategic communication I heard was, I hate Muslims. Todd, let me begin with you. I got about two minutes left. There's Russia that's involved here. There's NATO that's involved. There are people who believe that Donald Trump actually has a, a bromance, if you will, with Vladimir Putin, and it's dangerous to get involved with a guy like this. What are the people in Russia saying about Donald Trump? Do they look at him as a friend? They look at him as a chance to, uh, frankly, not have such a negative viewpoint against Russia. That is true. They look at him as possibly someone who can, I guess, get out of the way of the sanctions. And, you know, you're hearing a lot of talk in Europe about the sanctions being lessened or removed on Russia. You know, but Trump is, you know, one point is Trump has done a lot of deals uh, with Russian money over time. And these people are very wealthy. They're very smart. And they, they're smart money, if you will. And they would have not have put as much money as they did with the different Trump buildings around the world if they didn't expect to get their money back. I mean, he was not a politician, you know, trading favors like Clinton. He was making investments and making people money. So I actually think that is a plus for Trump in the long run, if you look at it from a, an economic standpoint. Hey, Fred, we've got Russian warplanes taking off from Iran to target ISIS in Syria. 30 seconds. Are we letting the, the Russians do our dirty work? We are allowing Russia to build a new alliance in the Middle East with Syria, Iraq, and, and Iran. It's very, very dangerous. It stems from this Iran deal, and we are being pushed out of the region because of Obama's incompetence.
But do we need to trust Russia, Fred? You know what? We can't be, a, we can't, I don't want to say a war, but are we going to be enemies at Russia for long, to forever? Russia's never going to leave Crimea. We shouldn't, uh, we shouldn't legally accept that. But frankly, a lot of rogue states have done things we don't like. Are the Chinese ever going to stop oppressing the people of Tibet? Someday we have to have normal relations with the Russia, Russians. That's a point I think Trump has right. Uh, and I think the Obama administration has no clue as to how to get to where we are right now with Russia where, and where they would like to get. I only got a yes or no from you, L. Todd Wood. Should we trust Russia and Vladimir Putin? As Reagan said, trust but verify. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take that. We're all going to nod our head at that one. El Todd Wood, good to see you again. Fred Flights, you also, my friend. Thanks for joining us. On deck, what seems like a little cough to some as others concerned about the physical fitness of a possible president.